In this video, we're going to build a prototype or breadboard circuit. In the previous video, linked below, we talked about a number of different construction methods for building different circuits. And this time I thought we'd focus on one. So we'll focus on building a circuit using the island cutter. The circuit we're going to build is a buffered Colpitts crystal oscillator. And this circuit comes right out of Wes Hayward's book, um, Experimental Methods in RF Design. So a simple uh, uh, Colpitts crystal oscillator buffered by an emitter follower. A simple enough circuit and uh, a good example. And we'll make a nice test circuit for me to test unknown crystals to be sure they're working. So the first thing we want to do uh, when we're doing the island cutter method is to figure out how many lands or islands do we need. And that's really just a matter of, is of determining the number of isolated nodes we have. So if we count them up, you know, we've got one here okay for the 12 volt uh, power supply connection we've got one isolated node here we've got uh, another isolated node here uh, we've got another isolated node here okay and that kind of includes the emitter up there of course we've got a little one here one here and then one at the output so we really have one two three four five six seven if we count those inputs and outputs so what we want to do is just uh, lay them out uh, to make it convenient to put the circuit board together. Okay, when planning the island layout, uh, we also want to consider the size and orientation of some of the components. So it helps to kind of deal with the three lead components first, like the transistors. So let's orient this transistor in this way. So we'll draw just a little triad of lands or islands for that transistor. So that'll take care of the transistor you know, kind of being laid in here ba uh, with base, collector, and emitter. So just above the collector, we want to have another uh, land for our 12 volt connection. So we'll put that one in there as well. Now the other transistor here is going to be sitting over here. The base is going to connect, get connected through a 1K resistor to this, to this node here. So let's put in that uh, connection for the base. The collector is connecting to this same node here. So the emitter is going to really want to be somewhere up over here, considering the layout on the base, of, or excuse me, on the package itself. So that'll be our emitter connection now for this. So this resistor goes to ground, so that's okay. We just have a capacitor to go to the output, and that can come anywhere off, of, you know, anywhere adjacent to this one here. So now I've got the the basic island layout that will kind of work uh, for this circuit. So what we need to do is kind of mimic that now on the circuit board. Okay, we're at the drill press here. I've got my reference diagram over here to see where the uh, islands want to be. And the circuit board underneath the uh, cutter here. You have to be a little careful with these island cutters. They are asymmetric, so they're going to want to tend to grab the copper. So we'll just do this very slowly and carefully. And uh, pardon the noise here as we uh, run the drill press to cut the lands. roughly in my diagram, looking over my shoulder. Those are the three in the middle. This will be for the base contact. Okay, and there's our, uh, our finished board. Uh, the land's all cut, uh, basically matching the pattern that we just kind of freehanded here. And uh, we just need to gather all components together and solder them up. So I've got all the parts kind of assembled here. And uh, I'm actually going to use a, a socket uh, for the um, crystal connection so that I can use this as a crystal chucker or tester. So I've got all the other resistors, the two transistors, and the capacitors, and we're all ready to go. Okay, the first thing I want to do is uh, take the transistor and bend and trim the leads to connect to those three lands. So we'll just do this with a uh, pair of needle nose pliers to put some nice bends on these leads, get things nice and neat here. And uh, 
So the orientation, of course, on this transistor is a collector, base, and emitter. So we've got those leads kind of bent in about the orientation we're going to need. And we'll drop them down and create a couple of nice little feet for the transistor to sit on. Okay, I've got the leads all trimmed on that transistor there. I find it easier to sometimes tin the pads here first before I put the first component down. So we'll grab the soldering iron let's just uh, tin the lead where the collector is going to go. Put a little blob of solder on there. And then we'll take the transistor and uh, I'll grab it with a pair of tweezers so I don't burn myself on camera. Uh, I do this without on camera here. I sometimes do it without grabbing them. but uh, yeah, right. So let's kind of lay the part in there. Solder that down. And boom, I got the collector connected. And we'll just solder in the other two leads here. So the emitter. And we'll do the base. Well, I've got to bend that over just a little bit so it doesn't short. Grab my tweezers here. Actually, I can just do this by hand. Push that over a little bit like so. Okay. And put the base down. Okay. And there's the first component uh, put down. Now for the 100 ohm resistor, I'm intentionally putting a big loop in it because one end of this is where the 12 volt connection is going to be made. So I'll just uh, lay this part in here, solder it into the collector, and grab some solder and solder in the connection here. This is going to be our 12 volt connection here. So having this big loop here will make it easy for me to grab onto that with a test lead to apply the 12 volts to that. Okay, and the next component here is this uh, decoupling cap. Let's see if I can uh, rest this guy in here. And reflow this end here. There we go. And then we'll solder the ground plane connection. Nice thing about anything that gets connected to ground, you just pick a spot and just create a little blob of solder, solder that to ground. So now that decoupling cap is done. So uh, we've completed uh, this part of the circuit here with the 100 ohm resistor, this 10 nanofarad cap to ground, and this transistor in place. And we'll adjust the leads for that uh, 10k resistor. So let's uh, lay him in here and solder that in place. Let's see. There's one end and we'll stick the other end right over here. There we go. That 10K resistor is now in place. The other 10K resistor that's connected to the base goes down to ground. But since there's a number of other components that I need to connect to the base to make some room, I'm not going to put the resistor in oriented in that direction. We'll kind of orient it up out of the way here. I'll grab the, the soldering iron here and we'll solder this guy in place here and uh, so that guy there I'm going to solder the ground connection up at this end and add a little more solder to this base island here there we go so that one's ready to go and uh, maybe we'll do a couple more just off camera here because you get the idea of how all these components go together. As I mentioned, uh, the crystal connection to this circuit I'm going to make with a socket so I can use this as a test oscillator. So I'm just using a piece of uh, socket strip here and I bent one lead out as you can see in a little bit of an angle. That's going to connect up to this node uh, where the uh, you know, at the base of the transistor and I tinned the board a little bit here uh, to make it easier to make the ground connections on the other ones and by using a row of pins here that will allow me to accommodate different crystal sizes, you know, the package sizes, to plug them in. So let's uh, make this connection in here. Grab a soldering iron and uh, if I can do this under the camera should be okay. Melt the solder in there, get that socket in place. Now with that in, I can just kind of uh, touch solder I put a little moat around each of these little ground connections down at the bottom to kind of fix this in place. So, uh, Alrighty, here it is, all finished. Uh, one of the advantages of uh, building the circuit like this and using the schematic as not only a, uh, a guide obviously to help build the circuit but also for the layout in some sense 
it makes it easy to go test and troubleshoot because it's very easy to see where all the nodes are that you planned it all out from the very beginning. So before applying power for the first time, I usually like to, to just double check I don't have a direct short across the supply. So uh, what we'll first do is uh, to set the, uh, the meter to re measure resistance. And I'll take a, uh, a ground clip here and connect it up to ground. And uh, if I short to ground here, we can see the meter is reading a short. If I go to the power supply lead here, it's showing about 20K. And that's about what it should show. Uh, because we're looking at this 10k and this 10k to ground. So I know I don't have a direct short. So I feel pretty good about uh, just applying power to this thing and seeing what we have. Alright, we're ready for the smoke test. Hook up power for the first time here. And we shouldn't have a problem, but uh, let's go take a look. Let's uh, hook up uh, the ground and positive 12 volts from the current limited power supply. Turn the power supply on and we're running at about 12 volts flip over to current and very low current which is good so either circuits not working at all or at least it's not shorted so nothing's getting warm okay and no smoke came out so hence the smoke test let's go make a couple of bias voltage measurements and uh, real easy uh, if we take a look at the circuit here we can see that uh, if 12 volts is applied here will be just a little bit less than half of that here because we're going to get some voltage across this 100 ohm resistor but not too much um, and then uh, so we'll get uh, between five and a half and six volts should be you know, right here at the base about another six tenths of a volt below that another six or seven tenths eight tenths of a volt below that so those are the only important kind of voltages to go measure so we'll take the ground lead from my DMM and hook that up here and uh, grab the test lead here now uh, let's see if I can do this without getting out uh, getting the glare on the uh, on the screen. Uh, let's see. How about right here? So the the base node is right here. If we take a look at that, we're sitting at about 5.4 volts, so that looks good. The emitter should be about seven tenths of a volt below that. So if we could move over to the emitter, 4.7, that makes sense. The emitter of the emitter follower should be about another seven tenths of a volt below that. And there we go. So that tells me the DC bias point is okay. So let's go take a look and see if it acts like an oscillator. Okay, to test it as an oscillator, what we'll do is we'll hook up uh, two probes here. One will be to the oscilloscope. Grab that probe lead there. And uh, I didn't make a very big loop here to connect up two probes, but uh, let's see if I can uh, squeeze on another probe here to hook up to the frequency counter. It looks like I've got that on there as well. Get the ground for that lead in there. So now I've got both of them on. Okay, so let's just grab one of these crystals. I have a bunch sitting down here. And uh, this one is marked 3.579 uh, megahertz. If we stick that crystal in the socket there, we'll take a look up at the scope. It is indeed oscillating. We'll look at the frequency counter 3.57, almost 9 uh, megahertz. So yes indeed this thing is oscillating and is working. Uh, so we can use this to test some crystals. I have some that are kind of unmarked and these are all kind of uh, just junk crystals here. I have no idea whether they work or not at all. We know that one certainly does. Uh, let's grab this one here and uh, stick this one in the socket. And if we take a look, that one is indeed oscillating. And that looks like that's a 6 megahertz crystal. So now I can mark that one and I know what it is. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed uh, this little build, give you an idea of what's involved in going from a schematic to planning out a, uh, an island-based uh, prototype, bending all the component leads, soldering all the components in, and doing the initial uh, smoke test and now functional test to be sure everything works. Anyway, comments are always welcome, and thanks again as always for watching, folks.